Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Fran. In this channel, I share knowledge and practical techniques on trauma healing and everything about mental health. So in this video, I want to talk about dissociation. I'm going to talk about three simple yet very powerful exercises that can help you move you out of this numbing, this shutdown, this dissociative state. So let's jump right into it. Dissociation refers to a mental state that you feel disconnect from both your feelings and your physical sensations. You feel kind of just spacey out and you feel like it's hard to concentrate or focus. You become very slow in thinking and you become numb. Basically, you just don't feel anything. Sometimes you observe yourself do something or you don't remember you did something. This is a very common symptom of trauma. Dissociation develops in response to this unsafe environment it protects us from feeling those unbearable and overwhelming emotions and sensations. For example, from those emotional or physical abuse, from the pain of being neglected, being tossed around, being abandoned, of being shamed, the pain towards inconsistent care and love from our caregivers, the pain towards unpredictability, the pain towards losing important people in our lives. When this kind of pain exceeds our window of tolerance, we shut down to protect ourselves from those overwhelming sensations. So we disconnect from the situation, from that feeling, from that physical pain that we're going through. For people who have been chronically neglected, abused, or shamed, we can adopt this shutdown response as a habitual way of dealing with situations. For example, when things happen, we automatically surrender and go to this freeze and shut down state. Of course, we don't feel anything anymore, but in a way, we get stuck in this situation. We get stuck in those painful feelings forever. Avoidance of difficult situations, of difficult feelings like fear, terror, grief, anger, and all those things don't really help us heal. It makes us feel more alienated and fearful towards those situations. It worsens our symptoms and it prevents us from real healing and also living fully in the world. So in this video, I wanted to share a couple of exercises that I have been personally adopting in helping me move out of this free state every time I get into it. And those are like small steps that can help you gradually find the connection that you have towards your body so that you get warmed up and you become more willing to face those difficult and painful emotions buried down below to help you move through trauma. The first set of exercises aim to help you connect with your body sensations. Like I've said, when we're in this dissociative state, we are so disconnected from our body and feelings we don't feel anything. Personal experience would be when I was seven years old, I witnessed my mom's death. So I watched her take her last breath, but I didn't feel anything at all at that time. I was just numb. For years, when my therapist tried to help me recall the situation to integrate this experience, I always have this vision, like I see this little girl going through the situation, but I don't feel it was me. Because if I witness it as someone else going through a situation, I don't have to actually feel the pain as if it wasn't me. So one important step to heal from trauma is to reclaim this body feelings, is to really build up your connection towards your inner sensations. One of my favorite um, expression is by uh, Peter Levine. So he was a founder of Somatic Experience and he talked about this felt sense. This felt sense is a totality of your inner experiences, not only your body postures, not only your inner movements, but also your perceptions towards nuances in the air, in the environment, your feelings or emotions, just every tiny little bit of cell in your body. So he encouraged all of the people who have traumas to really build up this connection towards their body. And one of my favorite exercises is encouraged by him to use shower head. Every day when we try to take a shower, we have to really let ourselves experience the pausing water from the shower head, like how it touches every little bit part of our body, our skin, like how it touches our 
hands, how it touches our arms, on our face, our neck and shoulder and everything. Just allow pausing water to move through every inch of your skin so that you can really feel what it feels like with those skin sensations. That would be a really like a fundamental exercise for us to do to reclaim every inch of our skin to really build connection towards our body. And that's the first step towards healing trauma. Another exercise I personally like to do when I go through this dissociative state was to use this, use this um, toys. Like I bought those in Chinese Amazon called Taobao. It's less than like $2. So it's um, this pineapple, see? And whenever I feel disconnected, I would intentionally um, to use those toys to feel how my hands are squeezing it, how, how it touches every inch of my skin. And I wanted to feel the strength of my hands and I wanted to feel the texture. I wanted to feel the shape. When I'm able to experience the safe feeling through my own body, when I'm able to familiarize myself with my body sensations, I no longer feel at war with my body. I can try to feel at home with my body so that my inner sensations and my inner experiences aren't that scary to me. So highly recommend this. I think you can get it anywhere. You can get any sort of toys that um, you think is fun to play with. And also it helps you evoke your um, physical sensations. Like I have those little boys as well. Like it's just really helps me to experience a full and complex sensations with my hands. Like because it's bouncy and it's soft and it's just easy to play with. The second set of exercises is on curiosity and creativity. When we're getting activated, we are triggered of our fight or flight or freeze response. Even if we go straight to this shutdown, there's a huge energy behind that and it's in our survival mode. So when we intentionally use curiosity, we intentionally activate our emotional brain with preferences, tastes, likes and dislikes, opinions, meanings, we are putting ourselves out of this non indifferent state. Any sort of ways that involve curiosity and creativity can achieve this effect. For example, for me personally, music would be such a great way. I would like to put on some R&B music, not those depressing ones, but those relatively lighthearted ones, the ones with a little bit of beats, some kind of rhythm, it really helps me tune into that state. It elevates my mood. So sometimes when I listen, I would start humming and I would try to recall the lyrics. I would try to sing along. And when I do this, I'm already moving myself out of this freeze response. I'm already going to the state of assigning meaning. It's like, I really like this girl and her voice is amazing and all that. I'm already activating my brain with those judgments, with those preferences, with um, the likes and dislikes and opinions and everything. For other people, maybe drawing or painting or uh, writing some creative poems or pieces, right? They all do the same thing. They all help you activate the parts of the brain that was cut off by this trigger, by this um, survival mode state. The third set of exercises revolve around seeking co-regulation. So when we're in this dissociative state, when we're in this shutdown state, we are in our dorsal vehicle. We need any sort of interactions to bring us out of this dorsal vehicle to our ventral vehicle. We need to be attuned to another positive limbic system in order to activate ours as well. I know in self-help world that we all encourage us to be good by ourselves, to be independent, to have the self-regulation skill. But co-regulation is also very important, especially if we haven't learned necessary skills when we're children through those positive models from our caregivers. So it's really important that we be attuned to another relaxed, calm, ventral vagal state 
to bring us out of this dissociative shutdown mode. I think a lot of people have a lot of resistance because when we're shut down, the first thing we would do is to retrieve, is to withdraw, is to want it to be left alone, to be alone, to be sad and be by ourselves, especially when it's triggered by shame of feeling not worthy, of not good enough, of not like not having the right to live. So we would want it to retrieve to our own bubble because that's our safe zone. But isolation fosters depression. So we have to really make deliberate efforts to help ourselves reach out, to move ourselves out of this depressive state. Try to reach out to people who are a bit positive influence on you. Try to reach out to people who are more empathetic, more compassionate, and they have this chill and calm vibes that they don't really try to control you or beat you down or not be supportive. You need positive and you need those nurturing people in your life to help you attune to their positive limbic system. And also not only human beings, I also find pets super healing. If you spend time with animals, for me it was dogs, they are naturally very grounded. They are at the present moment. They are super calm. Try to observe them. Try to observe how they rest, how they walk, and how they breathe. And when you do this, you will find yourself naturally attuned to this peaceful and relaxing state. All right, everyone, I hope this video is helpful. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. If you wanted to see more videos like this, please subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.